Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jocam. All right, so in this video, I wanna talk about uh, a little reaction involving carboxylic acids and something that uses a lot of chemistry we've been learning in OCHEM 2. It's a mouthful. It's called the hell volhard zelinsky reaction, which uh, I had to say pretty much three or four times before I started taking the video because I could not say it. So this reaction, uh, what it will basically do is if you have a carboxylic acid, so I just chose a simple three carboxylic acid here, three carbon carboxylic acid, but I might as well have done this. And actually what I need to expose is the alpha carbon because that's where something interesting is gonna happen right here. So when you do this reaction, if you toss in a first step of PBr3 and diatomic bromine, and then a second step of water, what you will observe is that you will place a bromine on the alpha carbon on your carboxylic acid. So you need to at least have a two carbon carboxylic acid. You need to be at least working with acetic acid to see this reaction in full swing. So uh, obviously you can see the little example up here. Just wanted to work with something small, so I did a three carbon carboxylic acid. So what I wanna do is just walk everyone, like walk you all through the mechanism. It's annoyingly a little long, but there's nothing in this mechanism that you haven't done before. It uses a little bit of alpha carbon, alpha carbon chemistry and a little involvement of a tetrahedral intermediate, but everything uh, in here we've done and kind of had some experience with. So it's just unfortunately a little long. So what I want to do is start off and do the first step in this mechanism, then I'll pause the video, then we'll finish up with a second, and we'll call it a video. Okay, so first, if we start with our carboxylic acid, the very first thing in this mechanism is this carboxylic acid, this uh, the alcohol part of the carboxylic acid has some nucleophilic character to it. It will go ahead and attack anything that is partially positive around it. And in this case, we see this PBR3, and right, on the electronegativity scale, bromine trumps phosphorus. So in PBR3, this phosphorus has a big fat delta plus, it, a prime candidate to be attacked. So this alcohol sees that, it will go ahead and attack, and what we will also do in that same process is boot a bromine off. So draw the result. So I didn't touch the carbonyl oxygen right there, so I do have a new bond to that oxygen, the phosphorus, those three bonds, it itself, formal charge stays the same, but we do have a plus charge on the oxygen. That will come into play very soon. So the bromine we booted, this lonely little bromine, that bromine will come back, and now that uh, you know we have a negative atom, that bromine is going to come back and actually attack the carbonyl carbon. I'm going to keep drawing this in blue. But we will do an attack on the carbonyl carbon and we will kick electrons up there. Oh, did it again. Sorry, gang. I'm trying to be a little bit better about using the same colors in my video to be a little bit more, you know, keep things popping. So, what we just formed actually is a tetrahedral intermediate. I'm gonna draw my, what was the carbonyl oxygen going kind of up to the left, the newly added bromine to the top right, and down here, this whole hot mess. Didn't touch anything with it, so it just stays the same. So we have the tetral intermediate, and like we do so often with them, it's going to collapse. We're going to reform the carbonyl right here, and we have to kick something off, right? We need to eject something. And that's why it was so important that in the first step of the mechanism, if we still had the OH, that's not a good leaving group. That wouldn't fly and be a prime candidate to be kicked off. However, we improved the leaving ability of that original OH by attacking the PBR3 because now it's not just a hydroxide, it has a positive charge, so it will be a stable leaving group once ejected. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my arrow this way, but I'm gonna bring it back down over here. Uh, 
So it reformed my carbonyl. And now I have a bromine. And you'll see what we also formed was HOPBr2. Okay, so to spare you all the process, this happens a total of three times. So I'm gonna kind of just draw an arrow and use my fun pink marker. If this were to happen three times, we end up with three of this species, which is an, I believe an alkoinal bromide, or actually we could just, this is an acid bromide, right? I think there's a different term for it, but acid bromide. And I'm just gonna kind of draw a little squiggly line up here keep things organized. We end up with, if we just keep this trend where we subtract a BR and add an OH, we actually just end up with phosphoric acid, H3PO3. And that's it. So what we can see here is we get a whole bunch of these acid bromides and we produce acid. So we are, albeit a weak acid, we're in an acidic environment. Okay, that's important because the very next thing that's going to happen, three markers in my hand, the very next thing that's going to happen, and I'm just going to kind of start right back down here, I'm going to click continued. Maybe not, doesn't look like it's spelled that right, but whatever. Because we are an acid, this is a carbonyl, we have an alpha carbon that has protons. This is going to tautomerize to its enol form. So basically, this will get protonated, something will grab an H, and these electrons go like this and this, and we know that we will form an enol. So once we've formed this enol, now we enter in our diatomic bromine. So what happens here is we are going to attack with the alpha carbon and snatch one of these bromines. Electrons, whoop, gonna go with blue. Electrons swing down. Electrons coming from the alpha carbon snatch up one of the bromines and we dump electrons onto the other one, producing Br minus. So now we reformed our carbonyl and yeah, we have a temporary positive charge. Didn't touch this bromine over here. However, we've now added a brand new bromine down here if I were to asterisk this bromine, that's where it ended up. So we did just produce another Br minus. So that Br minus is just gonna help us do a very quick cleanup step right here. So now we kind of have this species with two bromines and we also just, you know, obviously made some HBr. Okay, that, whew, a little long, is step one. That's the bulk of the reaction. So basically it was improve our leaving group by doing some attack, then form a tetra tetrahedral intermediate, collapse that sucker, boot off the what was the original OH. That gave us a bromine, an acid bromide. We flipped to the enol. That gave us some nucleophilic character at the alpha carbon, which is pretty much what we want in this reaction, right? Then we snatched up a bromine. We got the bromine we wanted, and then we did some cleanup. So in this next step, number two, Basically, this is just going to help us recover the full carboxylic acid character, but this is a hot mess. Let me just pause the video, wipe it away, and then we'll finish up. Okay, gang, on to step two, and we'll finish the reaction in the video. So I've seen people draw this next step differently, but essentially, right, this is where we're gonna introduce water, and that water will help us regain our carboxylic acid, you know, uh, functionality, character. So, I know we just deprotonated the carbonyl oxygen in that last step, but what I've seen a lot of people do is that does happen and then it gets reprotonated. Because remember, water is not the greatest nucleophile, so much like we did with uh, you know, acetal formation and whatnot, we need to activate the carbonyl. We do that through protonation. Okay, so let's bring in water. We're gonna just do the same kind of dance. We have a nucleophile, we're gonna attack the carbonyl carbon, form a tetrahedral intermediate, collapse it, yada yada. Okay, I'm 
and try and squeeze this in. I have an OH up here. I have a newly added O with two H's and a plus charge. Didn't touch the bromine over here. Neither this bromine or nor that bromine over there. All right, so now our tetrahedral intermediate is going to collapse. So what will happen here is we'll boot off the bromine that made our structure, you know, like an acid bromide, the very first one we added. But you'll see that is what's going to help us and touch the bromine over here. Now we have this back, right? We reformed our carbonyl. And now we have just this OHH plus charge and the newly booted off Br minus, good leaving group. And that bromine is going to help us clean up. And voila, we just completed our very first successful uh, Hell Volhard Zelensky. I have to look at it every single time. A lot of people just say HVZ reaction. Oh, whoops, didn't even draw it completely. There we go. Okay, so gang, nothing here you have never seen before. It's a lot of attack to kind of improve a leaving group, form a tetra tetrahedral intermediate, collapse it, um, then form an enolate, add to that alpha carbon position, then basically, you know, form another tetrahe tetrahedral intermediate, collapse it, clean up, done. So I imagine the HVZ reaction comes up in, you will probably see it in like a complete the reaction section, uh, maybe a mechanism, I feel like, in OCHEM 2, there are so many other important, uh, more complex mechanisms that professors would like to, you know, maybe challenge you and ask you about. It doesn't hurt to know this one. I feel like it tests a lot of principles that you've been like picking up and learning along the way, but you know it now. You know how to complete the reaction, or I think very popularly, this might be like a maybe fill in the reagent type thing. So just make sure to memor it, like memorize it, make a flashcard, just grab the easy points. Okay, thank you for tuning in on this video of Joe Chem, where we just mastered the HVZ reaction, and I'll see you all in the next video.